Hey guys, this is Jim Merritt with Quick Trainer in beautiful Wilmington, North Carolina, your QuickBooks and Accounting Experts. <clears throat> Today I want to deal with a client who is uh, new to QuickBooks and um, has a situation where he receives uh, deposits from his agent and most commonly it seems as though those deposits will represent one uh, one gig that he did but occasionally in order to save bank fees uh, going again to, in order to save on bank fees they will combine two or more uh, gigs into one deposit so um, and he needs to understand how to how to deal with those so that he can allocate the bank fees to one deposit but but split them over the multiple gigs as he's getting paid for let me see if I can paint you a visual here so he uses sales receipt because he doesn't invoice um, through QuickBooks and I'm just going to go back here to a date called July the 4th. And so this is a very common scenario where, <clears throat> where the sales receipt gets deposited directly to his bank account right here. Okay. And you'll see performance fees. You'll see commissions that he pays out. You'll see this bank fee. Okay. This one's very straightforward. And if it's a single gig that he's getting paid for, and the deposit um, represents that one gig, then it's fine to let that deposit go directly to the bank account. However, in the scenario that I'm trying to describe now, here's a case where on 820, he was paid for multiple gigs. So I've got three different invoices, <clears throat> excuse me, three different sales receipts um, that represent this. Here's one. And you can see um, $10 is a standard bank fee that he is charged, but he wants to allocate the three gigs that he was paid for. So I'm splitting up $3.33. You see if I click on the next one, $3.34. And then finally, $3.33. So that equates to $10, right? <clears throat> Um, so you'll notice up here, instead of these sales receipts pointing to 1000, your bank name, which would really be your bank, whatever your bank name is, they're pointing to undeposited funds. And there's a strategic reason for that, of which I'm going to explain. So if you look at these three, okay, this one is undeposited funds this one undeposited funds and this one undeposited funds and the reason is this now because there was one deposit that was made up of three gigs so if I go to the deposits now this is actually your deposit screen here but because there are transactions sitting in undeposited funds this screen appears in the foreground and this is quite simple now. We click off these three transactions. The deposit total that he received notice of was $23,990. And there we have one deposit now in QuickBooks that is going to equal $23,990. Okay. But within that, if we look at the details now, there are these three sales receipts and on each of these sales receipts we have allocated these bank fees to each project now technically he would have you know a colon here and then he would have a job name okay and each sales receipt would likely be recorded to a different job but that's that's not necessary for me to go into all that detail um, for purposes of this illustration. So I want to show you on a profit and loss statement now what this looks like. First of all, you'll see there's the bank fees. 
There's 333, 334, 333. This one here was that one, the first one I showed you where it went directly to his bank account. But these three right here, okay, these are the ones that went in as one deposit, but they're three different jobs, if you will. All right. I hope this makes sense. I hope this helps illustrate how you can handle uh, this type of scenario. Again, you want in QuickBooks, if I look at the register here, you want deposits in QuickBooks to reflect the manner in which they're going to show up at your bank. So in this case, he would have a deposit that hits his bank account for $23,990, okay, not three different deposits with each of these that you would have to add together to get them to total to $23,990, all right? If you have any questions, you can feel free to call us, 910-338-0488. You can also email us at info at quicktrainer.biz, and we encourage you to visit our website, www.quicktrainer.biz.biz. Make it a great day.